Four more contestants battle it out for a place in the heat finals. They will need to be at their mental and physical peak to cope with the challenges that lie ahead. It's the ultimate challenge of mind and body. Contestants, take your places. Where stamina, strength and mental agility are all that count. Who'll be the first to lift the K? The Krypton Factor, Monday at 7 on Granada. Hello, good evening. Well, they're a class act with any team. And tonight, they're here on Granada. Joanna Lumley and John Bowe. Kate and Jack, a class act. A new series of the comedy drama at Hopper State this evening. Well, the Dingles are hardly in the same league, although I'm sure they disagree right now in Emmerdale. <laughs> a refund on this French fiasco and I won't be the only one either. He probably left the country. Aye, well, with this sense of direction, they'll be lucky if they get past Skipdale. <laughs> Mind you, your Roy must have been a boy scout, eh? He found his way all right. <laughs> I'm worried as after death in the process. I've got to worry a bit more. Why don't I give my client a ring and say that I'm sick and then I can come with you? What for? You're going to ride shotgun? I just thought you could use some support. Yes, that's what Deb thought. He ended up getting himself arrested. Well, they got the wrong man. Adlington's the one that should be behind bars. You heard the police. According to them, he's innocent. Well, we all know that's not true. Yes, well, knowing it and proving it are two different things. Unfortunately, I can't prove it, so I just have to learn to live with it. I can't bear to see her like that. Me neither. But she's right. There's nothing we can do. I'm not so sure. I'll see you later. Bye. That was Vic. They're on the way back, all safe and sound. Oh, thank goodness for that. Well, when you think what could have happened... Yeah, well, they're both sensible kids. Yeah. You don't think anything did happen, do you? I've told you. They're just on the way back, right now. They were alone together overnight. My Kelly's been brought up proper. She wouldn't stand for any hanky-panky. Well, you're not suggesting my Roy to start anything. I've made sure knows the difference between right and wrong. Well, I'll talk to her when she gets in. Not that I think, you know. Well, I'll talk to him, just to, just to put our minds at rest. Not very busy this morning. Maybe if we mentioned he was in, there might be a rush. Hmm, <laughs> I want customers, not a lynch mob. Still, this might do the trick. A spring water. I'm sending it off for analysis. They say it's fit to sell. I reckon they'll come in droves. Oh, dream on. Reckon you stand a better chance with Betty as a topless waitress. Oh, thank you. Gee, I thought you'd gone ages ago. Oh, I thought I'd have a lie in. You are late for work. You better watch out for Kim. I'm not scared of Kim, Tate. <laughs> See ya. Have a good day. Can I get you anything else, Mr. Pollard? Yes, I'll have another pot of tea, please. Oh, on second thought, sir, I think I'll leave it. So much for my romantic trip to France. So much for my second honeymoon. It's not my fault, Eric Pollard couldn't organise a booze up in a brewery. Don't go blaming Mr. Pollard. It was his transport department what let him down. Then he ought to learn not to employ idiots. He employs our butch and our Sam. I think that proves my point. We better go to work, Sam. Tell him we want our money back. Eric Pollard is a cultured man, and you could learn a lot from him, Zach Dingle. Like what? Like enjoying the better things in life, like taking me to sophisticated places. If you want to go out, I'll do you. Where? If you've got it all packed, if you like. All right. 
Just on my way to see the solicitor. So what can be done about this assault charge? Well, you could wish me luck. I'm not sure you deserve it. It was a stupid thing to do, Frank. A man of your age, your position brawling like that. Yeah, OK. I've already had that lecture from Zoe. I couldn't just stand by and watch him get away with it. Yeah, and all you've done is make things worse. Now, what do you want? Satisfaction. There seems to be in pretty short supply at the moment. I have some very irate villagers on my back demanding refunds. Don't tell me your troubles. I've got enough troubles of my own. You were responsible. You supplied bus. Wrong. Des did. Go and moan to him. I've tried. He's not in the yard and he refuses to answer the phone. I must have gone to the same school of business as you, then. Thank you. What are you going to do about it? I think you've had your answer. Shame you didn't pal up with Chris sooner. Could have used some insurance. How are you adjusting to life on your own? Nights are the worst. I don't mean like that. Now she's not there to talk the day over with. Cottage seems empty, quiet. I even miss the house. Sometimes I feel like shouting just to fill the silence. Sounds daft, I suppose. Yeah, no, I felt like that when I lost Shirley. It wasn't an ideal marriage, I suppose, but she knew me better than anyone. I could be myself with her. Ah. Same with Brit. I think I miss her more as a friend than a wife. Well, as the song says, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Look, if you want to move back into the pub, well, at least we could fill each other's silences. <laughs> ah. I'd appreciate that. Thanks, Al. You could at least have bought some duty freeze while you were over there. Underage. I doubt if it matters in France. It was supposed to be the whole point of the trip. Is that all you care about? What with the petrol, coach fares, and the bed and breakfast, this trip's already cost me a bomb. Good mind to stop it out of your pocket money. I'm supposed to be your daughter. Why aren't you just a bit worried about me? I'll leave that to your mother. I'm sure she's got a few questions to ask you. <laughs> Is that you, Mr Pollard? Of course it's me. You're late. Well, we had to recover from the French trip. I'd rather not be reminded about that, thank you. Yeah, it was a bit of a disaster, wasn't it? Forget the French trip. I want to know about another disaster. What's happened to my clock? Clock? Clock, yes, you know, a fine antique. You must have seen it amongst the stock. Oh, yeah. That was... Ah! What'd you do that for? I think I couldn't guess. Please, continue with your explanation. Well, it was all a mistake, see? Remember when we did that house clearance from the wrong address? Vividly. And you told us to take the stuff back? Yes. Well, somehow the clock got mixed up with it. Oh, don't tell me you're starting a new trend in burglary. You break into the victim's place and you leave a present behind. Yeah. Sorry, Mr Pollard. Sorry? That's not good enough. I want my clock back. You mean we've got to break in again? Exactly. We might get arrested. Well, that's your problem. I don't care how you do it. I want it back. Understand? Yes, Mr Pollard. We'll go now. Hey, don't think you can hide behind them dark glasses. Not your day, is it, Eric? You're not going to riddle out of this one. You owe me. Oi, leave it, Jack. Hey? I'll do that. Thanks, Ned. I was just coming to tell him the same thing. But I wish the two of you had stopped fussing. We don't want you doing your back in again. Well, I'm not an invalid. You will be if you don't take it easy. The work still has to be done. And that's what you pay me for. Look, if you're that keen about it, talk to me about this. It's an article about diversification. There's loads of ideas. Yeah, I'm not going to start ostrich farming or keeping llamas. Don't be stupid, Jack. It's just a way to earn a bit more money. You could sell rotting veg for people to pelt Eric Pollard with. That'd be a winner at the moment. Or we could give tractor rides to the wool pack. Not as exotic as France, but at least we get you there. <laughs> I'm being serious. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. How about bed and breakfast? 
Take land two. No. Small scale, like Seth and Betty. It wouldn't cost much to convert the barn. There's lots of profit to be made, especially in the summer. We're close to the Dales and all that. Just promise me you'll think about it. Seems a shame not to take anything else now we're here. Let's clear out, Butch. My nerves won't stand it no more. You've got no ambition. I don't want to end up inside again. Let's just go and have a drink and get this back to Mr. Pollard. I've got a better idea. I'm not going back in that house. You don't have to. I suggest that we go home. We add the clock and then we sell it on. Ought to be worth a bomb. And we'll split the profits. 60-40. How come you get more than me? Because I thought of it. Pollard will go spare. He won't know. We'll tell him that the residents have come back and we couldn't get in anymore. I'll never believe that. You'll have to. He can't exactly come round and ask him, can he? Trust me, Sam, this will be the easiest money we've ever made. Now, now, there's no need for threats. Not if I get my money back, no. Oh. <laughs> I knew it were only a matter of time before the police caught up with you. Have <laughs> you come to ask him some questions about defrauding innocent pensioners? Ooh, there's a lot of questions I want to ask Mr Pollard. Ah, uh, well, I'll leave you to your good work, officer. <laughs> they should lock you up and throw away the key. Just a silly misunderstanding. I've been running a, a perfectly legitimate touring operation if I ran into a few Mechanical problems. My transport manager's sorting all that out. You want to go and see him? I don't give a toss about your buses. I do you want then? I've been watching you. Like my old DI said, give a villain enough rope, he'll hang himself. I am not a villain. I am a bona fide trader. It's all your stuff then, trader? Yes. Regular Aladdin's cave, isn't it? I'm not an expert, but I'd say some of this stuff's worth a few bob. Yes. You better have a receipt for each and every item. Because otherwise, I'm going to take great pleasure in hanging you out to dry, scumbag. the antibacterial hand wash that gently combats germs and odors while it moisturizes. So after every little job, always handle with Carex. It's our birthday, but you'll think it's yours. With deals like 25 meal ideas at really low prices and 25 offers at 25% off. So come to Iceland and join the party. Hello, love. Hi. Mm. Oh, thanks. Woman's Weekly. If you haven't looked at Woman's Weekly recently, you're in for a surprise. It's bigger and brighter, full of fresh ideas and fabulous features and short stories. You want me to change that, do you? No, but you can change the baby if you like. Pick it up and it's hard to put down. So take another look at Woman's Weekly. The actual size of a Jolly Rancher candy is two centimeters by two centimeters square. But the actual taste is immeasurable. Jolly Rancher candy, the great taste of fruit, square. Two seats to the opera, wasted. A deadline's a deadline. I did try to call. Well, I hope the coffee's good. Mm. It's gold blend. How was that Scottish trip? Log fires? Sheepskin rug. It was cold. It was wet. It was work. The unique balance of rich and smooth makes Nescafe gold blend. Thank you. What for? You know what for. Hey, I don't want the man you love to get the wrong idea. I don't remember saying I loved him.
How long will your P&O cruise be just a dream? If not now, when? Many fairy stories since I was a kid in nursery. I'm telling you the truth. But it's not going to let you off the hook. You can't treat me like this. I know my rights. You don't have any rights. Not when there's just you and me. Nobody's going to take your word against mine. Oi, I'm the law. Hello, Mr. Pollard. All right. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I need to talk with my colleagues. Whatever you do, don't bring that clock in. We can't. We can't get it. In the meantime, I want to draw your attention to this catalogue regarding the auction that we're going to be attending next week. Eh? Part of your training. Look, I know this French trip didn't work out too well, but... You mean the I'm... only people who got to France were Arroy and Kelly? And you're used to better things like first-class travel and posh hotels with Danny. What's it matter? It's over now. Yeah, well, then maybe that's for the best. Look, he wouldn't attract you like that if he really cared about you. Expert on romance, are we? Yeah, I'm not Biff exact. just looked in. It's home farm business. It's OK, Linda, I'm not checking up on you. But I take it Zoe's still out at the moment? Yeah. Good. It's actually you that I wanted to see. If you've finished your business, Biff... Yeah. Uh, I'll see you later for a drink. OK. Well, I hope I wasn't interrupting anything. It can wait. What was it you wanted to see me about? Ken Adlington. I think I've come up with a way to make his life a bit more uncomfortable. Here we are, then. Home safe and sound. Welcome back. I've been worried sick. Tell that, Mrs Windsor. I looked after her. Oh, thanks, Roy. you better get back to your mum, too. She's been worrying. Yeah. Well, go on, then. All right. See ya. Now, are you sure you're all right? I'm fine. I'm just a bit tired, that's all. Just going to go upstairs and have a lie down. Um, Kelly, I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but uh, Roy didn't give you any um, trouble, did he? What do you mean? Well, you know, he, he didn't try anything. No, he was a perfect gentleman. <sighs> that's all right, then. Do you think that means he doesn't fancy me? So, we're quite an adventure, then. I suppose we're no real arm done. Had a great time. I was coming to that. Now, the thing is, with the Windsors coming from London, Kelly is maybe a bit more worldly than you. How do you mean? Well, a bit forward, maybe. Hang on a minute. I thought you liked her. Oh, I do. I do. I, I just wanted to be sure that there were no... no goings-on while you two were over there. Of course not. You want me about that sort of thing. That's all right, then. Do you want some beans? Oh, yeah, go on, then. Is that the truth? Never know, will you? But Queen Anne right. If you've seen guess. one bit of furniture, you've seen it all. Can't we go home now? Oh, Mum will have our meal ready. Yeah. I think it's about time you let your little chums go. Thanks for the lecture, Mr. Parr. So, just the two of us again. I prefer it like that. If you lay one finger on me, I report you. I'd never hit a suspect, Mr. Pollard. Unless, of course, he was resisting arrest. In which case, I might use justifiable force to restrain him. Come on! What the hell do you think you're doing here? He was resisting arrest. I'm checking on stolen goods. You'll have to do better than that. He's an antique dealer. It's all legit. This isn't police business. It's a grudge. Harassment. And there's rules against that. I'm just trying to protect you against this little creep. I don't need your protection. It's my life now. I want you back. Chief Superintendent is roaming the station looking for you. You don't get back there soon. You're going to find yourself in a tall hat out on the beat again. Lucky I came by. Nobody's ever stuck up for me like that before. <sighs> Madam Tate's on her way. It looks like she's after you. Oh, what have I done now? No idea, but it saves aggro if we look busy. Uh, David! 
Yes, Kim. Oh, come on. Trying to avoid me? No, I'm just a bit busy, that's all. Yeah, well, I know you. You won't be able to stay away too long. It's just getting a bit too dangerous, that's all. I mean, Frank's nearly caught us once. I think we should just back off for a bit. We'll just have to be more careful next time. What I'm trying to say is, I don't want there to be a next time. How was the solicitor? Uh, I ought to see me all right. Man, he's chargy. He's got a top brief lined up. I never really got a chance to say thank you. And what for? Well, for helping me out the other night. This lad's a real diamond. We've got to do everything we can to keep him. Whatever you say, Frank. What are you two up to? Eh, uh, nothing. What's that behind your back, then? Eh, uh, it's a clock, ma'am. I'd work that much out for myself, Sam. What I want to know is, what's it doing here? It's a present. Present? For me? We thought you'd like it. Oh, I think it's the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen. Hey, hang on a minute, though. You two couldn't afford an old clock like that. It's not stolen goods, is it? I'm not having you in trouble with the police again, Sam. No, it's not stolen. It's Mr Pollard's. I thought you said it was a present. It is. It's Mr. Pollard that's giving it to you. Oh, I knew he was a cultured man, and... I know he admires me, but I never expected an out like this. Life's full of surprises, ma'am. Right, I'm just gonna clear the space for it in the living room. I'm gonna have it in pride of place. You two, watch what you're doing. I don't want a scratch on it. Why can't you just keep your mouth shut? Have a spoil your plan, Butch. Let's hope this fixes him good and proper. Well, at least he won't dare show his face in the village when word gets around. You ready for that drink now, Linda? I've got to put a few more of these up first. No, don't worry, I'll finish off. I'm starting to quite enjoy this. Oh, right, thanks. See ya. Hey, strong stuff, this. Well, the truth often is. That doesn't mean you should hide it. Well, what's this Ken Adlington been up to, then? Read the poster, Betty. I'll make sure everyone else does. Hi. 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 What's going on? Your Emma seems to have taken up bill posting. How could you do this to me, Emma? How could you do this? What are you having it in for? Because he happens to be a friend of mine. Well, I should keep that quiet if I were you. He's not too popular around here. I don't care what small-minded people think. I know a gentleman when I see one. And you could learn something from him. Like what? How to ruin a court trip? <laughs> no, like how to dress for a start and how to treat a lady. What's he done to deserve all this praise? You'll soon find out. Is that for our last? Yeah. You two seem to be spending a lot of time together all of a sudden. So? She had a bad time with Danny. I don't want to see her getting hurt. Look, Dev, I don't interfere with your messy little love life, so stay out of mine, all right? You and Biff having words? Yes. Yeah. Just give him a bit of advice. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to talk about Biff tonight. I want to talk about us. <laughs> Hasn't been much us lately. You always seem too busy. Well, I've had a lot on. But all that's going to change. I intend to devote a lot more time to you. Sounds good to me. Maybe we can start by me staying over again tonight. I was only trying to help by making me the talk of the village. You think that helps? Well, if he's punished, yes, it does. He deserves to be for what he did to you. Oh, you're as bad as my father. It's like you both think you own me. It's not like that. Well, it's how it seems to me. I was the one that was attacking. You've just humiliated me. Well, you've got to let me help you. Well, I have to work it out for myself. Can't you understand that? Otherwise, I'm going to feel even more worthless than I do now. And believe me, I can't feel much lower. 
please don't touch me. I'll be left alone. Why the long face? I thought we were celebrating the return of the prodigal son. Aye, we are. So much else to celebrate and all. I put my job application in today. So what's wrong? I don't know how to break it to Jack and Sarah. Oh, well, that's um, Don't say anything to me, no, for sure. And don't even mention it to the kids. They're not good at keeping secrets. It looks like our Linda's got other things on her mind at the moment, any road. Do you mind if we go for a walk? Why? Well, Dave's been giving his big brother treatment. You know, your dad keeps staring at us. They're just a bit overprotective of me right now. Yeah, well, I understand that. Just don't make what I've got to say any easier. Okay. Very brave sticking up for me like that. <laughs> there you were. I only wish I was worth it. I could be with your help. You're very good for me. You make me want to start my life afresh. I'm not so sure that's such a good idea. Oh, it would be, believe me. As long as you shared it with me. Look, I know I could never take you to the places that Danny could. I probably gets more pocket money than I earn at home farm. You think I was just after his money? No more than I was after Jessica's. But it didn't stop her parents thinking it. Do you still miss her? I wouldn't have worked out. Besides, I got hung up on somebody else. Do I know this someone? Yeah, pretty well. I just never thought I well, stood a chance. Well, you never know unless you ask. Well, then I'm asking. And I know you'd never feel the same about me as you did about Danny, but I won't let you down like he did. I know that. So, where do we go from here? True stories of ordinary people in extraordinary situations. You're seeking memories. Memories of things that happened to you before you were born. My belief is that we've got a genuine phenomenon here. Where are you? What are you doing? Crimea. Fighting. Michael Astor returns with Strange But True, Friday at 8.30. In America next, Dermot Manahan reports of a battle for custody.